trainers and other people, gym leaders or connoisseurs, whatever, whatever you prefer to be. Hello. What's up? It is time for another rating on Pokemon, and today we have some pretty cool, we have some pretty cool dudes uh, lined up. So let's just start because today we have some fossil Pokemon and some other Pokemon. But first, fossil Pokemon. Let's go. Let's go. I'm really sleepy. So that that explains the face. The first fossil Pokemon of the Hoenn region is number 345, Lilip. Now Lilip is resurrected from the root fossil and it is kind of like a little a little plant plant guy with eyes coming out of it. Um, confusing thing, it is pretty much based on a sea plant. It also lives on the bottom of the sea. It will attach itself to rocks and be a sea creature. But it's a grass and rock type. I don't know. I don't know what that means. Did you know that grass and rock are the types with the most weaknesses, but Lilip only has four weaknesses? What is happening to the world? Pokemon. The reason Lilip is a rock type is kind of obvious though, because obviously it's a fossil Pokemon. Most or all fossil Pokemon are rock types, but also Lilip is based on the seafloor of warm seas where it will attach itself to rocks. Rock type. Grass type, probably because it's a plant, but honestly it should be water because it's, it's a water plant. Can they have three types? It should have three types. So Lilip has been extinct for a hundred million years. That is a lot of million of years. But it can be resurrected by bringing the root fossil back to life, like I said before. And um, it's pretty cool. I've never owned a Lilip. I always go for Anorith, which is the next fossil guy. But um, I mean, I didn't. I don't know. I was looking at it. I was looking at pictures, and I was like, actually. Lilip is kind of cool. Pokemon Emerald says it disguises itself as seaweed by making its tentacles sway. Unsuspecting prey that come too close are swallowed whole. It became extinct a hundred million years ago, like I said. It disguises itself as seaweed. It kind of looks like an anemone. Anem anemone? Anemone. Anemone is what it kind of looks like. Lilip may be based on the crinoids, which are called sea lilies. They are creatures that are kind of like sea stars, live in the bottom of the ocean. People thought they were extinct, but they weren't. They're alive. I gave Lilip a four out of five. Then at level 40, Lilip evolves into Cradily. Now Cradily is, I always used to call it Cradily, and then I realized that the word Cred comes from Cradle, so it's probably Cradily. I'm sorry, I'm just having a mind, mind burp. It's funny that uh, they say Cradily has a heavy body because uh, when it's on the sea floor, they don't want it, want it to get like washed away. But Cradily is the same fucking weight as I am. I'm not that heavy. Are you saying I'm heavy, Pokemon? Shit. So Cradily is a uh, another plant guy. It's also a rock and grass type. In ancient times, Cradily built its nest in the shallow parts of really like the warmer seas. And then when the tide went down, it would be chilling on the beaches. I mean, I don't know how they know about that since it was a hundred million years ago, but sure, sure Pokemon. Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green says, it ensnares prey with its eight tentacles. It then melts the prey with a strong acid before feeding. Holy shit. Oh, that sounds terrifying. So Cradily is also based on the crinoids, but it may also be based on, and this seems way more plausible to me, the predatory tunicate. I hope I say that right. And I was looking at these creatures and I am a big fan of deep sea creatures. I think they're really cool. And I was looking at these predatory tunicates and they look so cool. So I am I'm down for them being based on those because those are awesome. Those are awesome looking. I love them. The German name for Cradily is Vili. <laughs> I just, you can't make it up, can you? It comes from vegan, which means to cradle, and Lely, which means Lily. Five out of five. Number 347 is the fossil Pokemon Anorith. Now, I, I truly really like Anorith. I like the way it looks. I like its design. I like 
just everything about it, apart from that it's a bug type. It's a rock slash bug type, by the way. It's resurrected from the claw fossil, which is the superior fossil of the Hoenn region. So Anarith also lived in the seas, like a lot of prehistoric ancient creatures did. It has these little wings on its body that it used to like propel through the water, like a speedy thing. I like it. This Emerald Pokedex entry, I just love it a lot. It says, it was resurrected from a fossil using the power of science. <laughs> that's great, that's great, I love it. Uh, and then it says something else. It swims by undulating the eight wings at its sides. They were feet that adapted to life in the sea. The power of science though, am I right? Yeah. Anorith is most likely based on the Anomaloka... Riss? Animalocaris? Which is a, in, in a, a creature from olden, olden times. And it also has some characteristics of the brine shrimp because of its little propelly legs wings, feathers. Anorith's name comes from Anomalocaris and Lith, which means rock. I give it a 5 out of 5. So cute. At level 40, Anorith evolves into Armaldo. Now, I'm not a big fan of its name, Armaldo. It sounds stupid. It's also a rock and bug type and I love the way it looks. It looks really, really cool to me. Armaldo is the evolved form of Anorith and that shows because it came out of the water and started walking on land. It can still catch prey under the water like a evil water slash sea monster of death and destroyal. But I, I, I like it. Armado has really really strong claws that can slice through metal and stuff like that. They're also retractable claws so it can maybe sometimes be cute without its I really enjoy Armaldo. Armaldo is also based on the Anomalocaris. I can't. <laughs> Anomalocaris. And also on dinosaurs because it walks on hind legs. It kind of looks like a, di a dinosaur. I don't know that much about dinosaurs, but that uh, w one specific dinosaur. You tell me. What dinosaur does Armaldo look like? Leave it in the comments below. 5 out of 5. Next up is the magic harp of the Hoenn region, Phoebus. Now Phoebus is supposedly a very ugly fish. It looks like it's just been thrown in the, in the trash many times. And it's just a bit gross looking. It looks sad, it looks upset, it looks wrinkly like an old lady that has lost one of her cats. It's, it's way, way less cute than a magic harp. Magikarp are, are, are way cuter. Because Phoebas looks a bit shitty, a lot of trainers don't capture it and they don't know what they're missing out on because Phoebas actually evolves into the most beautiful of all Pokemon, but I will talk about that later. Literally every Pokedex entry about Phoebas states that it's either ugly or boring or uninteresting or unpopular and it's kind of sad. Like every time a Pokemon gets these kinds of comments, I, I just get a little bit upset. Don't worry, Phoebus. I will, I will take care of you. But there's the problem that I have never been able to catch a fucking Phoebus. I surf through these fucking shitty cave lakes for hours and it's supposedly there. I cannot find it. I cannot find Phoebus. I want a Phoebus. Give me a Phoebus. Phoebus is most likely based on a bass, which is a type of fish, in case you didn't know. It's also based on the concept of ugliness, because it looks like it has like this washed down face of makeup, and it's kind of sad, honestly. Then it's also probably based on the ugly duckling, which is an old tale about an ugly duckling that then evolves into a swan and becomes beautiful. I give Phoebus a 4 out of 5 because I feel like it's just very underrated and also kind of sad. Phoebus evolves into number 350, Milotic. Now, Milotic is a very confusing uh, Pokemon when it comes to evolving it. Because um, in the 3rd and 4th gen, the way you could evolve your, your Phoebus into Milotic was by giving it max beauty, so by giving it massages and Pokeblocks to make its beauty stat go up a lot. But then after Gen 5, because it was really hard to up its beauty, it became just a tradable with a prism scale, which is kind of sad. 
Like, where's the, where's the effort? Where's, where's the challenge? Come on. Give it, give, don't get rid of the challenge, man. Ugh. Milotic is said to be the most beautiful of all Pokemon, and when it appears, it will relieve most humans from their anger and most Pokemon from their anger because it's just that beautiful. I, I like that a lot. Like I said, it is kind of the counterpart to Magikarp because uh, Magikarp and Feebas both evolve in these beautiful serpent-like creatures that look nothing like their pre-evolutions and I really like that. I wish every Every gen had one of these magic hop. So Milotic has these scales on its tail and depending on the angle, these scales change color and it's just it's just gorgeous. I really like its shiny form. I love the, the colors of the shiny form. If you have a shiny Feebas for me, let me know. I literally have nothing good to give you in return, but just, just let me know. Just Milotic is based on the legend of the Sirens, which were beautiful creatures that lived in the sea and can sing beautifully and will soothe anyone into loving them. Maybe Milotic does that. Maybe it's not that beautiful. Maybe everyone just thinks it's beautiful. You don't know that. It's also based on the oarfish. Uh, the oarfish is a really, really large serpent-like fish that lives in the ocean and I really like the oarfish. It's not very beautiful, but like I said, I, I'm really into sea creatures, so I don't know. It just looks cool, so I'm gonna go with oarfish. I like it. This this little bit on Bulbapedia just made me laugh. Um, <laughs> it's like, it's about the name origin, and it says Milotic may be a combination of aquatic, melodic, exotic, or lotic, and Milo, as in the sculpture, Venus the Milo, which is known for being an example of beauty and, like Milotic, possesses no arms. 5 out of 5, yeah. <laughs> 10 out of 10, Bulbapedia for that. Great, great reference. That was it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope you have a really lovely Christmas. Let me know what you got for Christmas, what you're doing for Christmas. I hope you have a good day, Christmas, whatever. I already said that. I don't know why I'm saying that again. I'm just leaving now. Goodbye. Ow. So Lalip is probably based on the crinoids, which are cre creatures. <laughs> Lalip may be based on the crinoids. Whoa, that is a hard word to pronounce. <laughs> Cradily used to. Crap. Didn't know. Maybe. Probably crapped. Number. What? <laughs>